What is up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Tua and today I'm here in Dublin, California for the Dream Team Tastemaker BMX and Vintage Bike Show. So I saw something really sick. These Nike shoes and Vans for the valve stem of the bike. So I'm about to try it, buy one and put it on my car. These are by Junior, if you need it. Ernesto, Junior's iCloud.com, hit him up. All right guys, so I just picked up these two right here for the Celica. Pretty sick. What is it, how do you spell it? All right guys, so I'm here with Junior from WeFest and today his show, The Tastemaker, is pretty awesome. So I want to introduce you to Junior from WeFest. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Junior and I'm with the crew, uh, Dream Team, and we decided to get a get together um, and we're calling it Tastemakers, the BMX Tastemaker Show. So it's uh, Tastemakers is kind of like um, the, a group of people that like set set the bar on you know what we think is stylish or what we think is the end thing or setting the bar for what people are trying to achieve mm -hmm. um, all the bikes here are really really well built and wonderful collections so that's like the purpose is getting southern california nevada and everybody else involved so we wanted to bring like the community together because there's a lot of like old school bmx guys mm -hmm. that are still around that are my age and older but then there's all this like the new school the kids that are into like the new style bikes but still bmx so we felt like bringing it all together Kind of like what week this is if you're into beamers well you can hang out with the the jdm cars you can hang out with all the the chevy uh, 60s uh, muscle car guys bringing everyone together because all we have that one common interest which is just you know bikes or cars so uh, this is uh, our our crew dream team crews um our first get together and it's got it's a pretty good turnout yeah, 200 bikes and you know, there's guys that have been collecting for years. Like if you just look over and pan over to this side, the mm -hmm. bike that's the first one that's on the stand over there. Yeah, that's like a fifteen thousand dollar wow. bike. Yeah, it's an eighty-three uh, Vector Mark IV. But you don't see that yeah, everywhere. No, no. So I think that's what like the background of what we were trying to do in the car show scene is mm -hmm. like what we're doing it here. So is there any plans uh, to do a travel tour show? Like how are you doing with Wayfest? Um. I think we would participate in other group shows like in SoCal or uh -huh. like in the East Coast for sure. Uh -huh. But um, this is our, only our first one. We've been a crew for about a year oh. and um, I think we're going to try to go down to LA and do something okay. maybe in the okay. next year or so. But we're kind of just taking baby steps and um, meeting all the great people in this community. So I think everyone here has a similar story where when we, when we were kids we couldn't afford one. So what's that one bike that back then you couldn't afford but now you have it um that's i would say 99 percent of the stories here is <laughs> they were just way out of our price range our parents were like nope you ain't getting yeah. that we're going to target uh -huh. we're going to jemco uh, but my dream bike was definitely like an 85 profile champion 24 wow. yeah and it's right there right here huh? <laughs> I've been building it for about 11 years uh -huh. and um, she debuted today. 11 years, oh, 11 first years. time. Yeah, long wow. time but it's a, a labor of love but um, it's like those are the best kind of builds when you kind of take your time yes. and you're not in a rush and just kind of settle for parts, uh -huh. throw it on there, you, you hunt, you yeah. hunt for the right part. So 11 years, what's the money pit? Um, I can't say it with my with my wife right next to me <laughs> because I'll be sleeping in the truck tonight. Oh. But I'll say that if I wanted to sell it today, I could probably get like eight grand for eight it. Eight grand for it. But, it's, but then you put more into her. Um, I, think, yeah. I think it's just the hunt. You can't put your time into hunt. The, the hunt, hunt of yeah. finding parts and stuff. Okay. But so okay. yeah, good times at the Tastemaker show. All right, Junior, thank you very much. And also check out the Week Fest for 2023. I'm gonna bring out my secret car out there. Secret, secret. I ain't gonna tell Junior yet. He knows already. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna not tell you guys. I'm gonna bring it out there. All right.
All right, guys, so this is Tommy, and that's his bike right there, the 76, right? Matthew Autocross, right? So, uh, Tommy, can you tell me about that Matthew Autocross bike right there? It's a 76, 1976 uh, Matthews, mm -hmm. Monoshock, all original. And I see that you have a bike right here, too. Are you, what's this one What's this one about? This is a 1980 T Mongoose. Okay. It's got the brand new uh, T, I mean, uh, Mongoose 3s. Uh -huh. Tough 3s. So, up front here is... Both of these are yours right here, right? Okay. And what's this one right here? It's a 77 Webco. Webco? Rep but not these. Are these pretty popular? or? These are, you know, from the 70s. Too many people are into the old 70s. Oh, I see. So they're a little bit older. So not everyone going back that far, yeah, huh? I, I've always enjoyed the, uh -huh. the, the simple of the coaster brake bike. Okay. And there's no hand brakes. It's just a single coaster. Oh, so just the and back I'll, pedal and back brake. I've always enjoyed the okay. 70s. You even got the old school uh, elementary uh, bike code right there. Well, you know, that right there, <laughs> yeah. this guy had a whole roll. Yeah. And you would go to him and he asked how many sections you want and he would cut it cut off. Cut him up. Uh, so I'm assuming he, he got it from like a bike, a schoolyard. Yeah, a schoolyard. Like, and he would just cut off the sections you wanted. Yeah, because I noticed this. I'm like, this is from like our elementary school right here. <laughs> you mentioned that this came stock like that on the bike, right? Yeah. Like the little uh, spring it's right mono there. Mono shock. Mono shock. Okay. It's popular and in the 70s. Popular in the 70s. They, they, they try to make them look like motorcycles. Oh, I see. So th does that help with the performance of the bike or just it looks? Makes it heavy. Makes it heavy? <laughs> it's, it's a real cushiony ride. Uh -huh. you know, but they're real heavy. Real heavy? Okay, cool. All right, Tommy. Good talking to you. All right. All right, guys. So I'm here with Adrian, and this is his SC Big Gripper bike. So, Adrian, can you tell me a little bit about your bike? How did you get it, and how did you make it to look like this today? Well, I got this for like, was it 13th birthday? That's yeah. his dad right there. <laughs> I got it for my 13th birthday. Uh -huh. it's all blue, brown, chromed out. Oh, okay. He's right there. All right. Right. And so I wanted to get creative. Like, I want to have a show bike. Okay. I like that you're just impressed, like to look nice. Okay. So what we did, we just went shop hunting shop hunting. Uh -huh, like all uh -huh. right get this piece get this like, we were, we were about, before that we're trying to figure out like what should we call what should what color should it be what should the design be what should certain parts of the so bike be there was a lot of planning before you I mean a lot, after yeah. you got the bike there's a lot of planning a lot, yeah. and how long was the build to get to where right from you got it to right now i think like a year a year like, to get all this stuff was it pretty expensive for like us first timers we don't know anything about bikes Something like this, how much would it cost if someone just, like, I want to build one too? Like, so let's say something like this. Like oh, a, this, is, this is really 1200 Wow. Really 1200 Uh-huh. But plus all this. Like, time and labor, like, huh? Time, the price, and all, all some custom padding right here. Okay. Probably like around, I think, what, 2000 now? So these are these wheels that, that came with the bike or the custom or oh, yeah. the, uh, these wheels like these are very hard to get very hard to get why is that are they not made here or they're made in a different oh, country they go like that like, oh okay they go back in stock like they're out like that oh, okay so they're custom made but they're just sold out quick yeah, they sell it quick okay and how did you get them though uh we you just a, got lucky? a lot of patience a lot of a patience lot of, got lucky a uh, lot of patience okay cool cool and anything that would you recommend to a new builder that from your experience what's your advice don't go crazy the first time okay don't go crazy just like have fun with the with your first with your okay. first build have okay. fun with nice but nice okay so with this bike here do you just collect or do you actually ride it too oh i ride it but i don't like to ride it too much like you know crazy like i'm gonna get dirty uh -huh. because uh -huh. i don't like it yet. so all right thanks uh adrian right yeah thank you and all right guys so this is justin and this is ghost rider theme arctic gripper right it was an Archer Ripper. It started uh -huh. out as an Archer Ripper. Okay. And now I turned the cold bike to a hot bike. So now it's on fire. It's a Ghost Rider theme that I call Ghost Bike. Okay. Yes, sir. So what inspired you to choose the Ghost Rider theme on your bike? Um, one of my favorite movies. Favorite movie? One of my favorite movies. I haven't, I haven't seen it done yet. I haven't uh -huh. seen no bikes hydro dip. Uh -huh. So I decided to be one of the first one to do a hydro dip bike. Okay. So how long you been in the game building bikes? For the last two years. Two years. What got you into it? Uh, my buddy, my buddy uh, back in Modesto, Tony. Okay. Ripping ain't easy. Two okay. nine riders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He started doing it. You saw it and you liked it. So you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into it as well. Yeah, he was trying to get me on a couple bikes, and um, 
It's just one year, my sons was like, yeah, I seen a lot of kids riding bikes and they was uh, popping wheelies. So I'm like, well, let's go get some bikes. Okay. So that's what we did. And that's what I've been doing ever since. Okay. So, donating this bike right here, what's something like this cost to wrap the bike like this? Um, is that like a rough estimate? You know? rough, a rough estimate, maybe about a little under a thousand. A thousand? Yeah. Wow. I actually, it's still pretty. I actually got it done in Texas. I flew out there a yeah. couple times. I got the the uh -huh. uh, frame dip first and then i i went dip the um oh so these are not wrap these are these these are hydro, hydro dip. dip wow okay yeah, hydro dip. all right so this is not wrap this hydro dip well that's cool then and i noticed the wheels are almost like slick wheels what's right. what's uh the motorcycle ghost rider had a you know his motorcycle had slick on oh, so okay to get it it's close too, to too close to high okay mm -hmm. so that's the reason why it's like slick like that instead of the treads and exactly. stuff okay so do you actually ride this bike too or just for show no just for show anything in here that you think that uh took the longest time to build and what's the toughest to put together it was actually the wheels the wheels actually when i got them they were yellow uh -huh. and i didn't really like it just didn't set it off uh -huh. like i, I was it, the, the orange that i wanted to go with was a different orange and then uh -huh. i was like man so i just, just need to get the whole bike on fire so you, so you just hydro dip it hydro dip everything. okay cool all right justin thanks for uh telling us about your life So this is the famous Leo, the famous Leo that makes What's bomb up, egg rolls. <laughs> That's how I met him. That's how I met him, right? That's right. At Jelly Belly, you're making egg rolls, huh? <laughs> and you were dancing with a song. You're making egg rolls. Uh, you so remember that? I remember. Thank you. Yeah. So this is Leo. He invited me to this event today. Without him, I would not be here today. So thank you, Leo, for inviting me out here. You brought out all these bikes. And it fit in your little Mini Cooper. Yes, I did. Yeah. My wife took the minivan to the Bay Area for the weekend. Uh -huh. And all I had was a Mini Cooper to fit one, two, three, and number four. And a tent. And a tent. <laughs> and, a and, a, and a pizza box. And a pizza box. <laughs> and a little box. <laughs> and a little box. <laughs> and your helmet. <laughs> oh, helmet. The 86. Here you go, 86. So Leo, tell me about little about yourself and also about the bikes and what what inspired you to build these, collect these, or be in this uh, culture. Well, T, you know, growing up in San Francisco in the mid 70s, early 80s, uh -huh. uh, there was this downhill BMX uh, bike track in San Francisco, okay, right by the neighborhood. Yes, and uh, I had one of those Toys R Us bikes. But everyone had the Mongoose Goose Motorbikes, you know? Uh -huh. I still race them with my Toys R Us bikes. So when <laughs> I was uh, able to afford these bikes, uh -huh. I started collecting. Obviously, uh, I put my heart and soul into this little hobby. Wow, okay. And I'm really proud of my builds right here. Out of all these bikes right here, which one is your favorite? If Effie has to go, and you just gotta keep one. I'm gonna have to pick the 1976 Redline Squareback because... The one here? Yes, sir. That is one of the holy grails of uh, vintage BMX right now. Okay. And it's, it, there's just so much history on, on how Lynn Caston introduced his products mm -hmm. in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And it pretty much paved the way for all other builders like uh, GT, Gary Turner, Skip Hess with BMX Products Inc., CYC, Harrow, Bob Harrow. You know, er, there's, there's just a lot of history in mm -hmm. uh, vintage and new school BMX. All right. So this is Leo. It's famous builds. Next year, don't don't miss Jelly Belly. Don't miss the egg rolls. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. You know? All right, guys. So I'm here with Joey, and this is Joey Skyway right here. So Joey, you had an interesting story that you told me a few minutes ago. Yeah. Can you tell me that story of how you know how you inquired this and you know your your history about the, the bike here? Well, growing up, you know. I lived in San Leandro and uh, all the best trick riders used to uh, ride with the uh, curb dogs. They were a freestyle team out of San Leandro uh -huh. and uh, the old late ba David Vanderspeck, 
he uh, passed away in the 80s, yeah. and he was my inspiration for, uh, for for the Skyway bike. I had one, I bought one, I yeah. had a paper out, and back then, uh, I put it on layaway. The frame and forks were $149, okay. and then I put it on layaway. Anyways, uh -huh. got it, put it together little by little, and then I got my license, and I <laughs> <laughs> put, and, it away, and I put yeah. it away in my, in my backyard. Okay. Anyways, later on in time, uh, I started riding it again, but somebody caught one that I had it, and boom, disappeared out of the backyard. Okay. Now I got this guy. Okay. Got a good job, my money pit, and <laughs> uh, it is what it is, you know. It's okay. an, another 83, just like my old one. Had right this, I put it together over the last four years. Four years to build. So, yeah, so the frame and forks actually came out of from Bavaria, Germany. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, I bought it from a guy in Bavaria, Germany, frame forks, and the wheels are bullseyes with 7x uh, uh -huh. uh, hoops. Okay. I laced them up myself, and here you are, my so, 83. So these shoes here. Yeah, these shoes were uh, were a gift to my sister in August, uh -huh. my birthday gift. And okay. they actually had Skyway, uh, Skyway, excuse me, Vans. Uh -huh. put the put the skyway logo on the back is that special is that, order yes so the shoes right there are made for the bike they're made, era or? yes they, 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 they represent the glory day of uh if you're a skater or, or a bmxer everybody rode uh, with vans can you tell me about skyway what is that skyway uh is a in 1982 skyway uh, in japan started making this frame set okay and as you can see it's a uh a drop it's like looks like a uh, um an eye drop oh so, so it's, it's not round it's, it's more not like round. yeah so they're famous for this and then the back you know the teardrop design is also very uh, i see teardrop and yes i made out of 4130 chromoly even your uh, valve cover here so yes. these are from uh the uk a guy made them for me okay and uh yeah and all kinds of good stuff you know uh -huh. This is original chrome and original decals. Okay. And also, I believe original uh, um, pad set. All right. You know, I some parts I looked roasted, like they they, they looked like they were used, which what which they were used. And uh, are these the period correct tire tread everything or the only thing that is not period? Well, it it is sort of. Well, the hubs uh -huh. are from '82. The okay. hoops are like '83. Yeah. The spokes are current. Uh, the current. I bought these somewhere. I think on Amazon with the nipples. Okay. But yeah, it's everything is like period. You know, all the parts uh -huh. are. Do you ride this bike or just for show? I, I ride it. It's not a carpet queen. I do ride it when I get it when I have a chance. Okay. And uh, I try to enter it in shows. Okay. Because, you know, I'm on your bike here, what's one thing that's unique that? You think that it's hard to get? The hardest things to find sometimes are these uh, the brake caliber shoes. Okay. And also period uh, brake caliber. These are from 84, both back and front. Yeah. With the original Weinemann uh, in the length adjusters. And yeah. Okay. That's, those were like the hardest. Very rarely do they come up with sale. This little knob. Yeah. That uh, That is not made anymore. That's, just all, uh, that's an 80s gadget. So it looks, it looks kind of fragile. Yeah, huh? yeah. This thing, <laughs> you can... Uh, lift them up and you can adjust your the, all the pressure yes brakes. the pressure on the brakes and uh -huh. this and that all right joey thanks for introducing me your bike and okay. uh good luck on the show today okay thank you sir all right all right guys i'm here with nash and this is nash gt turner right here so nash can you tell me about your bike and what inspired you to build it the way how you build it well growing up i always liked gts and uh uh, actually, I didn't even, even know that that GT logo was the logo before the wings. Uh -huh. So I really liked that. And, and when the 50th anniversary came out in Chrome, I wanted, I had to have it. So I got uh -huh. it. In, I got it in a 29 inch because a little bit bigger. And I still like to ride my bike. So, yeah. So I got one of these and I uh, uh -huh. put it together, and this is how it turned out. Okay. So this bike that you actually cruise with, right? Right. So yeah. it's not just for show. Oh no, uh, no, no. Okay. I ride that one all the time. So what is, what's one part that's the hardest to get and build on your bike right now? Mm, you know what? Some of this older stuff, like this, the stem here. Oh, okay. Those are from the nineties. Okay. So I had to get, to get that. Oh, just, just the logos by itself. I huh? know yeah. no wings on it, yeah, huh? Yeah. Okay, I see it now. Yeah. See, this is this is the original, original logo from GTA. Okay. Yeah, I got I got a, another bike. Over okay. Here. Let's go check it out. I bought this uh, blue one here. Where? This is a Basset. I bought uh -huh. this for my wife. Okay. She, she always wanted the Basset, so. Uh huh. And that was a color, the color combo she wanted. So this is a, this is one of the earlier ones. It's a 20, uh, 2014 Bassett when they still did the, uh, 
It was a superstar. Yeah, superstar. Was it painted like this when you got it, or you painted yourself? So it, it was, somebody had a powder put it already before I got oh, okay. it. Okay, but yeah. the color, the little rainbow color, you yeah, that was that's from uh, the, the. It came like that with the same rainbow stickers, but uh -huh. I reordered them to put brand new ones on. Oh, there. I see, yeah, I see. From uh, Bass in Southern California. Another thing is like on these here, because this is an older one. It has a, a quill stem, so it's oh, threaded. Okay. And most of them, if you look, they're they're threadless. So this is like the older style one. Oh, both both I see, I see. Yeah. Here is my, is my son's bike. Okay. This is the cost cruiser. Remember uh -huh. Karate Kid? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's what he what that's kind of bike he rode. And that's what inspired Kid. him to make that bike. Wow. Yeah. Okay. We actually we actually took it down south to uh -huh. a, a bike show. Uh -huh. And then uh, we went to where the Karate Kid lived. And took Take a picture there. Yeah. <laughs> the apartment. Yeah, yeah the apartment. <laughs> we went. They let us in there. Oh, yeah. that's tight, dude. Yeah. All right, Nash. Right, nice Thanks for y'all. Yep. So I'm here with Pat. How you this doing, is Pat right here. Came from Huntington Beach. Oh no, I'm actually from the you're, Bay. Oh, you're from the Bay, but you went to Huntington. My, uh -huh. my frame was custom built by Robert Balea out uh -huh. of uh, Huntington Beach. Oh, Huntington okay. Beach Cruisers. All right, can you tell me a little more about your bike and the build and everything? Yeah, so it's a uh, this is a one of three custom built frame. Uh -huh. The bars are custom built. These are the Zeus bars. Dual lightning bolts on the side. Ten and a half inch rise. Uh, it's on a twenty nines right now. And I'm these still, are only three. Built so far, right? Yeah, one of three. One of this three. Is the, this is one of three. And that's a two right there, huh? That's uh another one of the another three. one out there. Yeah. Okay. And they're all different. Like okay. as far as like uh mine has the US American bottom bracket, uh -huh. that one's a euro. So it's my first time seeing the a double I don't know what it's called, but yeah, like I, I said fat too. Yeah. Is there a purpose for this or no, he was just just custom. Just something he came up with. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's not performance wise no, or anything no, no. at all. It's just like a style he comes up with. Normally oh, okay. he builds uh, stretch cruisers. Oh, I see. I see. And he kind of just had the idea and put okay. this together. Yeah. That's cool, man. And what would something like this cost if somebody just say, you know what, I'm gonna, I want to buy one? You know? Uh, the frame, if. The frame alone, what a frame come run about seven fifty. Yeah, about seven fifty for a frame. Okay. I bought the bike complete, uh -huh. minus the bars for about thirteen hundred. Wow. Everything so else was on it except for the bars. Okay, so it's not cheap too, huh? No, no. So it's mainly just a cruiser then, huh? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Mainly just a cruiser style. Yeah. Do, do you take it out, or are you just uh, for show only? Or? Oh no, I ride it. You ride it too? Yeah, I do. Uh, I do rides every week on it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. All right, Pat. Good to meet you, Pat. Yep. Good to meet you too. All right. Thanks, So I'm here with Jason and he brought out all his award winning bikes right here to the show. And so Jason, great to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yep. So Jason, can you tell me what you brought out today, the year in make, and how did you acquire them? Sure. I will just go down the road. Yeah, um, sure. JMC is a 1979. Okay. Uh, it's original JMC long, originally white. Mm -hmm. um, I picked up the frame probably 1990. Okay. So um, a little bit of the backstory is when freestyle era kind of kicked in. Uh -huh. I wasn't too hip on freestyle. I didn't do <laughs> freestyle. Um, so I basically went to all the bike shops and okay. picked up all the race parts. So wow. I had a ton of parts um, just stockpiled at the house uh -huh. for, you know, builds later down the road. Okay. So I picked up the frame in like 1990. So you, did the right, so you did the right thing then? I did the right thing. Yeah. I think I did the right thing. You did the right I, thing. I, yeah. <laughs> Others might think I didn't do the right thing by not getting into freestyle, but... Uh -huh. Yeah, I, this was built in 1990. It's been sitting like this ever since. You know, it's got the base. It's got some good parts. It's got okay. the Phil Woods and original flights. And all the parts on these bikes are original 80s parts. Wow, okay. Um, the pro -M is a little, the frame is a little bit newer. I picked up just a few years ago. Okay. But it, this has an interesting story that this bike uh -huh. is an exact replica of the bike I had when I was 12 that got stolen. Wow. So when I was 12 years old, this uh -huh. was my bike. And it got um, stolen. And so it got stolen. Came so back I, to you. I picked up this frame a few years ago. I had the parts uh -huh. and decided I'm going to build it up just like the so way I had. How, how did it get stolen? You left it outside or? Um, 
yes, since my, my mother is no longer here, because she would really, she was mad. I <laughs> playing video games at 7-Eleven yeah. after yeah. my paper out, yeah. and I turned around early morning, and it was gone. Oh, so, see, they left, left it outside. Left it outside <laughs> at 7-Eleven, so uh, but it's back. But it's so, back. Yeah. That's, that's, a, that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is a 79 Patterson okay. uh, Anderson Avalanche. I've had this since the 80s. Uh -huh. um, this one was like one of my first. I wrote it up until about 89. Okay. Decided uh, at that point, I'm an old man. Why am I riding this tiny bike? <laughs> so. You're not old, man. Well, You're not old. At that point, I was 21. 20? That's young, dude. So I said, "Why? Well, I'm a grown man riding a tiny bike. I'm going <laughs> to hang it up, get something bigger. Yeah. So, uh -huh. um, I've had this one since the age. It's got the first generation wow. you know, graphite tufts. This, one, this one's done up well. Okay. So this has been sitting like this since 89. Wow. That's older than some folks right now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, the Rhino is another interesting one. I, I wanted one of these. They did a, 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 a bike test in 1980 or 81, uh -huh. I believe, in BMX yeah. Plus. And I called, you know, back then you go through the phone book. I called yeah. every bike shop uh -huh. asking to get one of these, and nobody would import it. And you wow. couldn't get them. So, so how did you get it? I found this at a bike shop in like in 1990. 1990. It was just sitting there. They didn't, you know, I got it for next to nothing because, you know, back then they didn't really know what it was and just said, get it out of the shop. So now I knew it was, this was my holy grail. So now it's gold. Now it's gold. So yeah. I, you know, I've had the parts. I did a lot of the, I did all the polishing and everything myself. Uh -huh. This one's built as it sits since 1991. This was one of my favorites because I always wanted one. So. Yeah, I love the chrome on it. And yeah, plus and like, even with the chrome, pads, the pads, yeah. yeah. And, then, yeah. and then it's, you know, it's pretty, if you want to commit, it's pretty unique that this yeah. frame has a lot of unique features. Like the, the top and down tubes are channeled. Oh. They have a groove. So it's not round, huh? It's not round. And then you've got going from oval so, it, it's got some really cool features that were back in the 80s. Okay, yeah, uh, I, I love this. One. Yeah, I love that, that just channel that way. So that's that's one of my favorites as well. And then the okay. last one, the Pro Neck. Um, I've always wanted a National Pro and couldn't find, you know, they're getting uh, expensive. So mm -hmm. the National Pro guys actually started remaking the frame. So okay. it's, a, it's a new 2022 frame. Okay. Um, I've had the sticker kit for about 15 years. I'm like, if I ever get a National Pro, I want to do yellow because okay. you never see them. You always see blue, red. Yes, yes. Um, so a lot of 80s parts on here, a couple of newer things, frame mm -hmm. fork, and you know, obviously the bars, those are new. Are those wheels that came with the bike something that you did? No, yourself? everything's all these bikes. I, I didn't buy any completes, I oh, built so them all myself. Your parts are connected, yeah. so they're all my parts. And okay, this has quite a few 80s parts on it as well, but yes. this is my newest build. Wow, and it's a 24 inch, so yeah, I think I kind of brought the spectrum of some different areas. Yeah. I, on my builds, I try and incorporate mm -hmm. kind of everything, you know, chrome molly cranks, three-piece cranks, two-piece, one-piece, and have a little of everything on all my bikes. Yeah. Out of all these bikes are here, what's one bike that is your favorite that you just love and love and love? I'd say my Patterson. Your Patterson? I've had that forever. So, I, yeah, that would uh -huh. be my... If I if somebody said you could only keep one uh -huh. oh, yeah, hard sure. choice, yeah. Well, I think it would be the Patterson. The Patterson? I would, keep, I would hold on to that one. Why is that? I, just because I've had it for so long. I uh -huh. mean, it's got a lot of really original parts. I've always been a Patterson fan. Okay. Um, and, I, you know, I rode Patterson's for years back okay. in the late 70s, early 80s. So. Uh -huh. Wow. It just sits, it, there's a place in my heart that it's, you know, for that bike. So what's one thing that you would advise any builder, any new builder out there, what to do if they're looking to building a bike? You know, build it the way you like it. Uh -huh. Don't listen, don't try and build it for, to compete for something or put something on the you know, build it the way you like it. Mm -hmm. I built things that I wanted or wanted when I was a kid or had. So, yes, yes. Uh, you know, the vintage scene's getting a little pricey. Uh, yes. You know, there's, <laughs> if you want to stay vintage, it's it's expensive yes. to get into collecting now. I mean, I don't know even if I would have been able to do it now. Yeah. It's just, it's very expensive. But yeah. build it the way you like. It doesn't okay. have to be completely vintage. You know, you find vintage or you find newer. Mm -hmm. um, Build it how you want, you okay, know, because cool. it's a personal thing. It's uh -huh. it's it's art, and people have different opinions on art. So yes, yes. that's kind of how I take it. Is just you know, you're not going to please everybody. You build it the way you want it, yes. and you like it. And, yes. you know, so that would be my advice. All right, Jason. All right. Thank you very much Absolutely. for showing your bikes, and uh, good luck on the show today. Thanks, I appreciate it. All right, guys. So I'm here with Sammy, right, Sammy, and this is his Bel Air bike right here. So can you tell me about your build and why did you choose to make it uh, really retro like that? You know? Ballard's 
It's a nice bike, you know. If you want to go more old school, old school style with the pinstripe and everything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Old in California. Yeah. Uh, are you from the Bay Area, or where are you from? California, Corona, California. Wow, that's like down in LA, huh? Yeah. So did, you, did you just come up for the show only, or for the show? For the heavy hitters. Okay, heavy hitters. Is that all from the Corona, or? Yes. Okay. All around. We're all hitters. around. Okay. Okay. All Southern California. So how long did it take you to build this uh, Bel Air right here? But it took a couple of months. Couple just to months. Organize what I really wanted to okay. do with it. Okay. So, so with yeah. this setup like this, how much would it be cost for someone to build something like this? Um, I really don't have the price. Uh -huh. Kind of starting price. About a thousand, two thousand. More. More. <laughs> okay. Just, we're, not, we're not gonna say. We're not, yeah. we're not gonna go that far, huh? We're not go that far. I just... <laughs> so making the parts, did you do it yourself mainly, or you had somebody in the shop do? We, we have friends that mm -hmm. you know uh -huh. helping out and seeing what, what uh -huh. we can do to our bike. Okay. Are these? You made it yourself or uh, you? By Brooks. Oh, by Brooks, huh? Okay, cool. What is something that was the hardest to to build on the bike? The pinstriping. Pinstriping. Which is something that you cr you thought of yourself with the you drilled it through and went like that. Is that something something custom or was yeah, it like that? A, this is a basset. It's a basset bike. Oh, there. So this is already like uh, stock okay, like that. Yeah. Okay. All right, Sammy. Good to meet you. Man. All right. I'm here with Morgan and he brought out three of his fantastic looking bikes right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and let Morgan tell you about the bikes a little more, but how did you start? And what, what got you to this collection? Uh, just growing up, uh, you know, riding BMX bikes. Uh -huh. So this uh, this bike right here is a 1985 Redline. Wow. So this was my bicycle when I was a teenager. You still have it, huh? I still have it. <laughs> and, um, so I restored it because uh -huh. um, I've always loved the BMX scene and especially with like all these bike shows and stuff yes. that are coming in, coming up. I just thought I would showcase, showcase it. Kept I it. couldn't afford it back in the days, you know. To yeah, of course. Nice, so. Yeah. Now you got adult money, right? I got, <laughs> so I got to work a little bit to yeah. make uh, these bikes nice. How about this one right here? What's so... Uh, this, is, uh, this is my... Actually, first real build. Uh -huh. I just built this uh, maybe uh, like a month ago. Okay. Um, just following all these bike enthusiasts, you mm -hmm. know, on uh, Instagram, and uh, so I just uh, felt like I needed to build me a bike that uh -huh. was like badass. Is there like a theme for this one here, or are you just say, you know, I'm just creative? Uh, no, or I'm like I'm a Raider fan, so I like silver. And black, <laughs> I thought you were. You know? Ooh, I yeah, like I can tell. Black, you know? <laughs> Um, so chrome and black is, is just as good as silver and black. So this one represents like the Raiders right yeah, here, the Raiders. Kinda, <laughs> yeah, most of yeah. uh, This is a 1981 uh, GT. Okay. Uh, 26 inch. Okay. So my older brother built this in 1981. Are these original uh, Every, grips? Yeah, original. Uh, except the tires and the seat. And wow. The pedals. Okay. But everything else is all original from that. Uh huh. And, uh, I picked it up from them when I was younger. Okay. And then I just kind of kept it. Uh, What's one advice to any young person that's looking to build bikes that, uh, from your experience, what they should do first or at least look into before they start building it? Uh, well, there's so many different. I mean, of course, you're going to look at size. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, what size do you want, how tall you are, or, um, but then, uh, you know, what you like. To build a bike, it's more expensive. But to buy a bike, it's cheaper. Okay, cool. So, and then build it up. Build it up so from you there. Might maybe put a thousand, fifteen hundred into it. Uh huh. As if you put build this one up. Uh huh. Might like, like more thousand dollars. Okay, sounds good. All right, thanks, Morgan. Thanks for your interview oh, yeah, here, and then uh, looking forward to seeing you yeah, win some trophies. Hi guys, so I'm here with Manny and Ma Manny Senior and Manny Junior, and these are their builds right here and what inspired you guys to build it the way how you guys build these bikes were like really pricey back in the days uh -huh. my parents couldn't afford one i always wanted to build a pro freestyle tour and 
We just started hunting down the parts. We got the frame and forks, mm -hmm. and we started hunting down the rest of the parts. And so, are these frame custom built like this, or yeah, are they, they, they came like this, came like, like in '87 to '89. Okay. okay. Yeah, with the GT Coin logo. Oh, I see. Yeah. So okay. then, uh, you know, hunting down all the parts is what's really fun. Okay. Because now parts are really hard to find, and they're Especially, really expensive. Yes. Uh huh. So it took me about three years to find everything, and had it uh, the, the frame seat post handlebars and fork i had to send them out to some guy out in delaware by wow. the name of chip uh, at c4 labs he's the one that did all the day glow uh, powder coating day glow wow. powder coating so it's not yeah. done here in california no huh? no i had to ship it to him because he's wow. like okay because this era correct pretty much era correct powder coating mm -hmm. these are the NOS era correct 1980s GT oh, shoot, tires. GT tires on it, huh? These are not the repops. These are the original tires that came up back on the 80s bikes. So how did you acquire these tires right here? I got them from a collector out in Florida. So they'll make a, these anymore, right? GT collector. No, these are no longer being made. Wow. So it took me a little bit over a year for me to convince the guy to sell them to me. As you can see, they still got the little knobbies. Yeah. How about this one here? Can you tell me what this one here? That, that, that one, I bought it from one of my friends down in Southern California. Uh -huh. He just told me that the bike was for sale, so I picked it up for me. Okay. It needed to get redone a little bit, so I hunted down the original SR GT Power Series cranks. Oh, I see, I see. And those are original from 1987. Well, as you can see, this one does have the original GT Super Lace hubs uh, hooked up to the Yukai hoops. And this one also has the Power Series Cranks original from '87, the SR 474 pedals. So all these parts here, you've been collecting for a while, or you yeah, just acquired? Just, or I, I was hunting them down. So when I found them, then I had them sent out to get them restored. Okay. Repowder coated, recompleted, and then once I had everything together, it was time to build a, okay. a bike. Yeah. As you could see, uh, I even had the the guts for the seat chrome-plated. You know, people sometimes they don't take their time doing all that, but little details. Huh? Yeah, little details. You know. Okay. All right, Manny. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Sure. Thank Thanks, you. Manny. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yep. Alright guys, so I just got home and I want to thank the Dream Team for hosting such a great show, Tastemakers 2022. I had a great time and I do look forward to the next one because maybe on the next one I might even have a bike to show as well because I learned a lot and I got some ideas that I might build on the bike but I'm going to keep it on the down low. 
But anyways, I want to thank all the people that I interviewed. Thank you for sharing your story. Those are amazing. And if you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button and turn on your notification button because my next video is about me revealing my secret card I bought from Japan. So turn on your notification button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.